All right, good evening. Uh, welcome to Grace Baptist Church, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Brother Chris Hannon, uh, pastor of Grace Baptist Church here. And uh, glad you could be with us out there in, uh, what do you call it, virtual virtual, virtual, virtual land or whatever. But um, uh, we spoke this morning uh, 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 just briefly about on this subject about um, the Word of God. And uh, I said something about memorization or uh, reading your Bible. That's what I talked talk about, reading your Bible. And there's many um, apps out there and there's many programs and things to give you schedules. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, um, calendars and there's, you know, daily things pop up. I like the daily uh, thing that pops on my, my phone. I got the app where it sends me something daily, um, several, you know, portions of scripture to read. Uh, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, so that I can have, uh, the Bible does say, give us this day our daily bread, amen? So some portion of scripture uh, in your life that day, who knows uh, whether or not it may be, uh, have a, a significant impact that day. But uh, this evening I want to be in Romans chapter 15, and uh, I just want to talk uh, briefly this evening about uh, why we have the scriptures. Why we have the scriptures. Um, uh, the, and, uh, it, it, the question uh, I saw some time ago is somebody said something about the scripture. They say, is the Bible still relevant in today's society? And uh, given the complexity of uh, the problems we face in our society, somebody said, is the scripture real, uh, really prevalent? As a Christian, you know, I absolute, absolutely believe it's a most, pre, uh, most relevant. Amen. I believe it's vital. I believe, it, I believe uh, we're in trouble in our society for, because we have lost our understanding of it and lost its importance of it in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, yeah, even in our churches. Uh, I hate to say it, a lot of churches are all about entertainment, uh, all about, uh, they've uh, gone uh, totally political uh, in the sense of just uh, s social clubs instead of being a spiritual house uh, for people can get some spiritual help. Uh, some of these problems, they're not social, they're not, they're not economical, they're spiritual. Amen. And they require a spiritual answer, amen? And, th and that, that answer comes from the great physician. Uh, not not a, a psychiatrist, not a psychologist, but the Lord Jesus Christ in that he can wash somebody from their sin. Amen. And give them a new beginning, uh, not only cleaning their sin, but their very conscience. And so they can serve, uh, serve God and serve their fellow man with a clear conscience. And so uh, I was thinking about, uh, is the Bible still relevant in, in the light of the racial unrest? Is the Bible still relevant in the uh, uh, light of the political toil, toil uh, turmoil? Is the Bible still relevant in the light of COVID-19? Uh, is the Bible still relevant in, uh, uh, in the light of the, our economic hardships? And I believe all those answers is still is, is still is relevant. Now, uh, does the Bible will give it? Give me a specific uh, answer to COVID-19. No, I don't think, you know, it's got the antidote and everything else. Uh, but I know one thing the Bible does point out, COVID-19 or not, uh, if, if you don't repent of your sins, you're going to likewise perish. Uh, and they can call it COVID-19, a motorcycle accident or whatever. Uh, if you don't put your faith in Jesus Christ, uh, like the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world. Right. Uh, 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 but but and the Bible goes on and says that he that believeth uh, not is condemned already. And so, friend, you are already under the gun if you're not a, a believer in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the Bible points these things out. And so uh, I want to give you some things about this. Uh, of course, the Bible is relevant in our society. Now, uh, in, in past societies, it has been relevant. Uh, the scripture is most important in the period of, re uh, of the Reformation. And there was Reformation was about people, uh, uh, Luther, Zwingli, Calvin, and other people coming out of the Roman Catholic Church and its traditions, uh, its indulgences and all this macro, uh, mass and sacraments and all these things, and getting back to the purity of what the Bible had to say about grace, about you know salvation and marriage and everything else. And so certainly it was important uh, during that time. Uh, sir, say what you want to you. It was important. It was important and. We have the scriptures because folks were willing to sacrifice. You realize this, right? People would rather give up their life than give up the scriptures. Amen. But it seemed like, you know what, people in our today's society, because we got Google, we got uh, all these uh, apps and everything else that uh, the scripture has boiled down to just, you know, little things we look up. I'm amazed the amount of people that have scripture tattooed on their person. 
I see it all the time. Philippians 4, 13, I think, is one of the most popular. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. And when I see that, I would think, well, if you can, why don't you? Well, first of all, why, doesn't it, why it should be helping you keep your mouth uh, clean instead of filthy. And so I'm like, is the Bible just had boiled down to a, a book of just almost a, a, a cliche things that you only go in there and you look at it only when, you know, certain things happen in your life? Or is it given as, as a guide to a Christian's life? I believe it is. I believe this right here, that certain, it certainly wasn't given to be, uh, for us to judge it, though people sit in judgment of it. It certainly wasn't given so we could change it. And there's a, oh, there's, I, at the time, I remember when I got saved, back in the 80s, early 80s, they were uh, at, at the point where it had been changed a hundred times. At that point, I'm saved over 30 years. I have no idea how many times they've changed it. I know they've made a mess and a mockery of it with some of these versions. You know, uh, I know some of them, they try to make it kid friendly and they try to make it more pertaining to women's uh, needs and everything else. But let me tell you something, we, done, we went gone from uh, now it's the uh, non-binary, not non-sexual, took out all the references to he as God as being uh, masculine and they got him as it and all this kind of stuff. That, the Bible was never given us for us to change it. It was given to us so that it would change us. Amen. It would have an impact in our life. It's, that's why it says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind with it, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Not us change it to suit our society with its ever-changing uh, 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 a litany of words that we got to learn uh, what to, you know, what to call per people lest people be offended. It certainly wasn't given us to, uh, uh, so we could correct it. It certainly wasn't given us to be ignored or added to. It was, you say what you want to, uh, we could spend uh, just days, we could, uh, we could look at inspiration. First Peter 1 talks about holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This book is different than other books. Somebody said the other books were given for our ed, uh, ed, education, uh, but this book was given for our, specifically for our salvation. It even says so, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That's what it says. Uh, the, uh, we could talk about preservation and surely uh, Psalm 12 talks about God preserving it from uh, this generation henceforth forever even Jesus said that heaven and earth is going to pass away but my words not going to pass away and thank God you know what uh, it was around when I needed it amen and amen and it was around the, and people believed it and passed that on to me and I'm, I'm so grateful that people in my life that did that you know I, I, we was talking to I can't remember who it was uh, we was talking to somebody and they was talking about how, how it, it, it's amazing when you first get saved that uh, and you go start going back and talking to friends and family and co-workers and everything else that it's, it's amazing that everybody was already saved. And you're like, you saved? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. And, you're, and, and this is, it's like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> it's like nobody told you. Right? This, you save, you say, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you know, family, friends, grandparents, you know, my parents, uh, brother, sister, cousin, you know, many people, and, but nobody told you about salvation. And you're like, wait a minute, how come if all y'all saved, nobody told? I said, save people talk about salvation, amen? Yes, they do. They, they, they save people, tell other people about salvation. But all of a sudden, nobody told me about salvation. And then worse than that, nobody was living anything close to what the Bible said to even manifest the salvation in their life. And they get mad also when he said, well, let me tell you about Jesus. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> Say people want to hear about Jesus. Amen. More about Jesus what I know. Amen. But Romans chapter 15, I think Romans chapter 15 kind of sums it up. Why we have our Bible specifically for us in our days. Romans chapter 15, begin reading here verse uh, 1. It says, uh, we, we then that are... Uh, Strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. That's always, uh, Christianity has always been about this right here. Jesus Christ showed us uh, it's more better to, to give than to receive. Amen. It's always been a life that's 
uh, 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 submitted itself for, to God for the purpose of somebody else. Uh, so he says, verse 2, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. And here it is, verse 4. four and it just kind of sums it up why we have our Bible. What, what is it all about? He says, for whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our what? Learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have what? Hope. And my prayer, let me tell you something, that is a real pre prevalent in the day and time which we live in. Folks need some hope. Amen. They really, I mean, they really, they sit, watch, sit around watching CNN, CBS, and ABC, and NBC, and all this kind of stuff, man. Breaking COVID, COVID cases. You know, I get an alert on my phone, COVID cases, over 350,000. They got just people like dying in the streets. Let me tell you something, people ain't dying in the streets. If they dying in the streets of anything, they're going to be dying of heart disease. I just dread, if y'all came this way, anybody see the Popeyes is open up here? You can't even pull off the street and get into it. I saw a man, Celine said, look, she, we were sitting at the light, she said, look at Popeyes, and I went, good gracious. <laughs> but I want you to notice, it says this right here, it tells us specifically why, why it was given. And this Roman, I like Roman 15, 4, because it, it summarizes, amen? And so I'm going to give you three things. Uh, again, why we have the scriptures, and I hope you pay attention because you know what? Again, the scriptures are more than just a, a tattooed on your arm. It's more than just a, a, a little a good luck charm or a little trinket somewhere. It's given to you as a Christian to help you in your very life and actually to live the Christian life. I mean, uh, you, don't, you can't live the Christian life apart from the scriptures because the scriptures re will reveal what the Christian life is really about. Let me tell you something. People got all kind of quote-unquote stuff they're calling the Christian life that can't be verified uh, 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 by scripture because it's not scriptural. It's just a list of do's and don'ts that they think is okay. First of all, so notice, first of all, it says, for what sort of things were written aforetime? So it's the things that were written for again. So it's, it's incumbent upon us understanding and reading what was written aforetime, before us. Uh, I was talking to Brother Baker, and, uh, and I've told y'all this. Y'all have heard me say this, and we all kind of concur about this right here. God didn't wait until our generation to all of a sudden reveal the most important things that the churches need throughout all the ages of the church. And so we got all this extra revelation. We got all these groups with extra revelation and feelings and prophecies and everything else. Let me tell you something, friend. I, and Brother Mike, I was talking about most of what we are told as far as the New Testament keeps telling us to remember what we we're already told. Amen. And go over it again. And, and sanctify it in our heart and bring to remembrance. You know, man, we're soon to forget. It's, and it's never bring, get something new and innovating. I think people come to their Bible, and uh, we, he and I were talking about several doctrines that people come up with, and it's always somebody, let me tell you something. Uh, you can always beware when somebody has gotten something from the Scripture. Now, I know God has showed uh, each of us probably something particular from the Scripture, but let me tell you something. We ain't the first persons He's shown anything to, amen? And He didn't. Whatever He showed it to you, it is not for you to edify yourself or boast yourself. It's always to be a blessing to the church. But when somebody comes up with some new revelation that only, A, they can understand, or you can only understand when you come to them. <laughs> and they can only interpret it. You sound like the Roman Catholic Church when they used to have all their liturgies and all their stuff and masses in Latin with nobody, nobody knew. So you had to come to them because only the upper crust learned Latin. Let me tell you something. This scripture was written for our learning. So let me tell you something. If nobody could understand it, how could we learn it? And it's written in a way that those that are spiritually minded and prayerfully minded, God will actually teach them something. Amen? So first of all, it was written for our learning. Let me tell you something. You know some things we learn? In our ignorance, let me tell you something. We thought we knew how to worship God. I know I did. I did. I thought I knew all about God. 
in my ignorance. Remember Acts chapter 17 when Paul uh, goes there and he looks at the people and he says, as I look around, he said, I beheld y'all devotions. And he said, you got this over here, you got this over there. And to cover, if you miss one, he said, to the unknown God. And he starts laying out what they have and what they think about God. Then he reveals to them who true God truly is. Let me tell you some of the scriptures it showed us. It showed us who God truly is. Amen. And I'm glad. It's like Jesus Christ when he had the, uh, the uh, conversation with the woman in the well. You know what he told her? She said, our father's in this mountain. Y'all say this. You know what he said? He said, a woman, he said, at least he said, he said, the Jews, they know what they worship. We worship, he said, because salvation is of the what? Of the Jews. Amen. He said, woman, you don't even know what you worship. And you know, it's a lot of people that are right there. You know why? Because they have not got, they have not learned what the scripture says about worshiping God. The Bible clearly says they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Not in tradition. So many people rely on tradition. Uh, and uh, 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 the truth of what it's talking about is sanctify them through thy truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. We got a standard. You, we've, we've learned that the standard of truth that God is looking for to be worshipped by is his word. Got to learn it. It, it says for our learning. Uh, 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 so this right here, you know, we, we've learned from the scripture this right here that Hebrews chapter 11, turn if you will, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. I came up in school and you know what? I was taught evolution. I was taught evolution. I was talking about PK man, Cro Magnum man, Australopithecus, Java man, right? And I was taught all about all these, you know, uh, that uh, over millions and millions and millions and millions of years, or oh, before that, uh, somewhere out in space, and it was all darkness. Then all of a sudden, bang! The Big Bang happened. Why did the bang happen? I don't know, but, you know, the Big Bang happened. And then all of a sudden, something fell into the ocean. What was the ocean? Where did it come from? I don't know. But and then all of a sudden, it's, uh, you know, it multiplied and everything else. All this, That's what I was taught. Let me tell you something. The Bible shows this right here. I learned through the scripture, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Here it is, verse 3. Through faith... We understand that the worlds were framed by, here it is, the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. I learned that through reading my Bible. Amen. See, it's written so we can learn the truth of what God is saying versus what man is talking about. Amen. Look at this. Uh, it not only tells you about creation, there's several things. First of all, it, it tells us about salvation. Do you realize this right here? Without the scripture revealing biblical salvation, you know what we were doing? We'd be doing what everybody else is doing. Uh, it, it falls, somebody said it falls into two religions. Here's the two, here it is. Two ways. Uh, God's way, which is through Jesus Christ, or man's way, and you know what that is? His own works. Amen. I don't care what the religion is about. I don't care what the, the name of the religion is. I don't care what the, uh, the people are. It's either what God, it's either through Jesus Christ and the merits of Jesus Christ and Him alone, His shed blood, or its works. Amen. Whether it's keeping the Sabbath, whether it's abstaining from f some food, or whether it's going, uh, going to a certain place, keeping a certain ritual, you know that all is? It's either grace or works. That's, that's it. That's what it. That's what it boils down to. You know how I know? Because I learned that from the Scriptures. Amen. Yes. The Scriptures. It's, it's, to, it's for our learning. Our learning. So we know what salvation is. Go to Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26 and look at verse 18. Our learning. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. There's some people who claim to be Christians. You know what? I was thinking about this. I said, they claim to be Christians. Oh, I've been a Christian for 20, over 20 or 30 years. And you know what? They haven't learned a thimble full of what the worship of God means in all their life. They claim to be Christian. You know why? Because it's not a book of, for them to learn by. It's just like a, a book for them uh, for just Sunday morning or just special occasions. No, my brother, it's a book for everyday living for a Christian. Amen. To learn. To learn about the life of a Christian and what is pleasing and what is right in God's sight. Again, our society has moved. We, we so far away. We can't even figure out we male or female. 
They said, I'm talking about the great minds. I'm talking about people with, you know, with, with uh, uh, captain gowns and decree, decrees, <laughs> degrees. They can't figure out we male and female. Let me tell you something. Uh, I can go to the first couple of chapters of the Bible and figure that out. Amen. I told you like a uh, 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 watch night service uh, Thursday night of a Calvary Baptist church I, I li list some things I said man I fact checked that stuff amen I just went to my Bible and fact checked and I said they lying the Bible said God made us male and female and he, guess what it don't say other <laughs> no sir but Acts chapter 26 look at this look at verse uh, 18 he says Acts 26 18 he says uh, here's the gospel to open their eyes now watch this. And to turn them from darkness to light. This is what learning does. It turns you from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, watch this, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inherit among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen? That's what the learning of the scriptures will do. You know what it'll do? It'll show you the work of Jesus Christ and that when he said it is finished, it is finished. It can't be added to and it can't be taken away from. All that is needed for your salvation was done in Jesus Christ. I've learned that through the scriptures. Amen. It's given for our learning. It's given us, watch this, for our salvation. It's given us for our spiritual uh, warfare. I didn't even know I was in a war. Until, <laughs> I didn't even know I was in a war until I got saved and started reading the scriptures. Amen. I didn't know there was a spiritual battle going on. I didn't know I was in a war with my flesh. Because you know what? I wasn't in war with my flesh. I just did what my flesh wanted to do. Yes. I, yeah, I was in, I, yeah, I was in league with my flesh. Let's do this. Okay. Look at this. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. I've learned. That's what I'm saying. I learned these th things uh, through reading of the Bible. Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Watch this thing. Ephesians chapter 6, I think around verse uh, 12. Uh, look at this. We'll come back a little bit. Uh, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the powers of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I didn't much believe in there's a devil. Like the one guy said, I didn't much believe there into the devil until I married this woman and found out he had a sister. <laughs> But I didn't know that. I didn't know there was spirit. I, 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 I remember seeing Red Devil, a Red Devil, uh, what is that, hot sauce? You know what I mean? That was my idea of the devil guy running around. But if you would have asked me and said, why, why, I, I couldn't give y'all any answers. They would say, why would, if there's a devil, why is he so against man? I was like, I have no idea. And why, why, why is he against you? As an individual, I would say, I, I, I don't really know. You know what? I started reading my Bible and I learned, you know what? The, the book, the Bible showed me why. Amen? Amen. That we, the devil, it's showing that the devil walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It gave me that spiritual picture so I could understand why. And then it tells me how to fight him. It says, resist, stand fast where? In the faith. Outside the faith, it's, it, it is drawing that picture picture so I can understand outside that flock I'm easy pickings and so the Bible it, it, here in Ephesians it says finally my brother verse 10 be strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and verse look at and it's it, I learned that the battle is not physical he says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of, uh, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, because of that, because of what the battle is, I thought I, I needed something spiritual, the word of God, to do battle. And let me tell you something. You know why a lot of people can't do battle? Because they haven't learned the lessons to fight. Some of the lessons are study. Meditate. You see, the Bible's not a book where you just grab, and people like to do it, they just like to grab a verse. No, it's a book where it's meditated upon. It's studied. Amen. It's committed to memory. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed unto thy uh, uh, law. But the uh, word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Amen. Not something I just put on a pedestal or I just break out my Bible. Somebody said uh, that uh, 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 a new Bible is a bad sign. I got a new Bible. <laughs> that somebody said an old Bible tattered uh, shows that it's been read and used. Amen. It shows us 
It learns, it, it, it teaches us uh, about creation. It teaches us about salvation. It teaches us about this spiritual warfare and why we, why we need to put on this uh, armor. Watch what it says in verse 13. Wherefore, taking the, the whole armor of God, that you be able to withstand an evil day and having done all, to stand therefore having loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, Taking the shield of faith where which you should be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked. The hammer of salvation. The sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication and spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. It tells us about this spiritual warfare and how we are to wrestle. It tells us about Satan's devices. Amen. More than just the old adage of Flip Wilson back in the day when I was a young man saying, the devil made me do it. Somebody, I was watching something, they was talking about cross-dressing. Cross-dressing, it's, it's long been a part of American culture. And Flip Wilson made it popular by Geraldine uh, and his alter ego, Geraldine. And we laughed and everything else and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, man, I said, uh, we was lost as a goose in a hailstone laughing and everything else at what God was saying was an abomination in his sight. Now, I ain't going to say it wasn't funny because it was funny. But let me tell you, what's, what's not funny is the fact that he was making light of it to make, make a, a fun. Now, now that if you say anything against it, let me tell you, you got a real problem. Because it ain't a joke today. It's individuals really think that I, was, I'm, I am Geraldine, even though my name was a Gerald. I was born a man, but I identify as Geraldine. And if I say anything, I don't care about your chromosomes. Let me tell you something. You can be chromosomally a, a, a Gerald, a, a, a outward, physically, a biologically Gerald, a, 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 um, uh, 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 at the chromosome level, at the uh, testosterone, your testosterone could say he was Gerald, but you can identify as Geraldine. That is messed up. I'm so glad. You know what? I, I'm, I'm telling my brethren, if without the learning of the scriptures, we would be falling prey to the false science that is pre prevalent in our day. Because we will regard science. We say, well, they've got science. Let me tell you something. I've got the Bible. Amen. I fact checked your science. And my Bible told me that was false science. Or science falsely so called. Amen. It, it tells about Satan's devices. 2 Corinthians, uh, if you go there quickly, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. 2 Corinthians 2 11. And it says something about this. It says, we are not ignorant of his devices. You know why? Because I learned. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2, it says this. For I am jealous over you with uh, uh, godly jealousy. He says, um, for I have espoused you to uh, one husband. I present you as a chaste version of Christ. But I fear, lest by any means a serpent beguile eat through it subtly, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. I learned about the devil's devices, some of his devices. Let me tell you something. Uh, we learn about them so we won't be ignorant. I was in the Marine Corps. You know what you spend a lot of time doing? Studying the enemy. Why do you study the enemy? So you won't be ignorant of his tactics. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. We're not ignorant of his devices. Let me tell you something. We know some of his, some of his uh, most famous uh, devices. First of all is division. Amen. Divide and conquer. Remember uh, uh, the strong man? How, how do you get in the strong man's house and spoil his house? You got to bind the strong men first. Amen. That's what the devil does. I told you, we got a whole society of strong men. That buy, they're bound by financials, mess, being financially messed up, physically messed up, right? They're in pornography. They're in a, 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 a drunken messed up. They got a drug messed up. He's got them bound. Amen. You know what? I thank God that Jesus Christ is still to make you free. Amen. But that's, his, that's one of his greatest devices. Uh, deception is another one of his devices. Amen. He, de he deceived Eve and thought, you know what? You'll be smarter. You'll know everything. Let me tell you something. No, you won't. No, you won't. Watch this. Uh, 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 direction. His direction. You know what? The devil's good at giving you the, the broad way. Amen. Which lead it to destruction. Right? Uh, uh, he, he's, uh, he, you know what he does? Uh, it was, these things are written so we can learn who we are dealing with and learn what, where to stand. You know what the Bible says? Resist the devil and he'll what? 
flee from you. But you got to resist him in the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, all this charismatic and Pentecostal stuff about, we'll, uh, I'm going to jerk the devil inside out and uh, reach down his throat and, and grab him by the tail and shake him out and all this kind of... Let me tell you something, friend. One thing I learned about the devil is this right here. Uh, you no match for him without Jesus Christ. Amen. You no match for the devil. He's been at this thousands of years. You want to think you're a match for the devil? Devil, look at your life. First of all, your life's got to be like Job's, full of integrity. And then you see what he did to Job? You see what he did to David? You see what he did to Samson? You see what he did to Solomon? You on that level? The sweet songs of Israel, the man after God's own heart? My friend, if he can make a mockery, you see what he did to Moses? You see what he did to the saints? He's called the accuser of our brethren. You better be in your Bible learning about his devices and stand where God tells you to stand. Amen. He's getting for our learning. And we learn, we, it's, a, it's a spiritual battle. The weapons of our warfare are not, uh, are not carnal, but mighty through God. Amen. Amen. Brethren, people are falling left and right. Some people that you never thought would ever fall. Amen. Some people you thought would never fail, would never falter. Amen. My brother never tell you something. The battle is the Lord's. Amen and amen. And it's a vain, let me tell you something. It's a, a horse is a vain confidence, and princes are even more vain confidence in the battle that we're in. And I've learned that. This is what you've learned in the scripture. It teaches you about these things. And second thing, come back if you will, a, a, a Romans chapter 15. Paul put it like this. I've learned whatsoever state I am to therewith be content. Amen. Romans chapter 15. He said through patience. He said, uh, 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 Rome, he said uh, uh, whatsoever things were written, were written for our learning. Have you learned your lesson? Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said uh, uh, about life. And I said it's one thing to uh, make a mistake. And I said uh, and then. Keep repeating it. It's as if you didn't learn your lesson. You ever had done something in your life and it was really, you know, eye opening and you say at the end of it, you go, well, I learned my lesson. Amen. I ain't going to commit that mistake no more. Uh, something about pain often in our life, we, we, we may forget about pleasure and everything else, uh, but it's like, you know, I found out about a dog. Let me tell you something. He'll, 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 uh, uh, won't remember a lot of things, but one thing he will remember is pain. And I said, you know what, we just like that. We will remember pain, amen? That, that, uh, that whatever caused us pain, right? We remember those things. And I'm like, uh, but it's amazing in this life, people keep doing the same mistakes over and over and looking for a different outcome. You know, that's called insanity. Amen. They haven't learned their lesson. And it's sad to see a Christian who's been given the word of God and been given this wealth of information. Notice it says, what sort of things were written aforetime? All the illustrations, all the saints, you got the book of Proverbs, we got Ecclesiastes, we got the Psalms, we got their lives on display for our learning. Of that which was pleasing in God's sight. That which was displeasing in God's sight. And if we don't take an example of that and learn from it, shame on us. Because it's provided for us. What sort of things you were written four times was written for our learning. Now watch this. Verse uh, uh, 4. So what sort of things were written four times were written for our learning. Have you learned your lesson? That we threw here, here's, here's something. And we threw what? Patience. One thing the Bible will show you uh, over and over in people's lies is this thing called patience. Amen and amen. You, ain't, you don't become a Christian very long and then all of a sudden uh, 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 people start talking about patience. Because you realize, you know what? You got to wait on God. Amen. amen. You got to wait on God. And when we don't wait on God, you know what? We find out what happens when you don't wait on God. Uh, I think Saul was one of the most greatest examples of failure when you don't wait on God. He was impatient. He was, uh, what you call it, a uh, person uh, just, uh, he was not stable. He was, uh, well, somebody just jumps all the time. Impulsive. impulsive. He was impulsive. 
He, was, he didn't pack, lack patience. And you know what? It cost him his kingdom. Uh, matter, matter of fact, he got in big trouble over that. Remember? Remember what he did? He sacrificed. He went and, and sacrificed something that only the priests were supposed to do because he got scared and he didn't wait on Sa uh, Sa uh, um, Samuel to get there. And Samuel told him, he said, you have done foolishly. He said, God would have solidified your kingdom if you hadn't have done this. And then, you know, and then, watch this, then God wouldn't talk to him after that. And then, you know what he did? I'm talking about, and never waiting a patient on God, so he goes to the witch of Endor. He just went from bad to worse. Let me tell you something. Uh, one of the very virtues that the Bible says for us to add to our Christian faith is what? Patience. Patience. And what it shows, it says, given us for our learning that we through patience of the scriptures. Amen? Patience. And so patience. You know, patience, it's waiting on the Lord to do his work. Waiting, uh, watch this, not being hasty. Uh, that Bible talks about our race and it says, run the race with, Hebrews chapter 12 tells us to run the race, race with what? Patience. Too many times I think Christians get in trouble. You know why? They think this is a sprint. Faith requires patience. It's an attribute. It's mentioned in James chapter 5. The Lord has, uh, it says, have long fruit and patience for it. And my brother tells us, it's something that we as Christians, we learn through the scriptures that those who patiently waited on God were rewarded because of their faith. Amen. And those who didn't wait on God, you know what, they found themselves in a mess. Amen and amen. Every time. Watch this. Uh, Abraham got impatient one time. God said, I, God said, your number's going to be as the sand of the sea, without number. He said, look up there. How many is there? He said, if you can't number them, you won't be able to number. Right? And so, you know, he got a little older. And he said, oh, Lord, he said, uh, uh, let this Eliezer uh, stand. He said, no, nope. oh, somebody coming from your own body is going to be your heir. He got impatient. His wife come to him. Maybe, maybe go into my handmaid, and uh, that's how we're going to have kids. He goes to this handmaid, Hagar. How'd that turn out? Wonderful. Next thing, next thing you know, Sarah's saying, Sarah, she, she told him to do it. Next thing you know, get, get, rid, get rid of her. Kick him out. And then here comes, from him comes this nation. All these nations that are surrounded by him today. By them today. Amen. Because of a lack of patience. I don't know in your Christian life, have you ever lacked patience? And then say, you know what? If I had just waited a little longer, then you know what? Uh, the Lord would have worked things out. Or do you just be impulsive and work it out your way? Patience. We through uh, learning and patience of the scriptures. Uh, go to Colossians chapter 1. Just a, a couple of verses on patience to remind us of this uh, central fact in our Christian life. Now, there's patience, my brethren, and patience, uh, there's a difference between patience and negligence. And there's a difference between patience and uh, 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 vacillating. Uh, patience is waiting on what God said he'll bring to pass. Amen? Uh, vacillating is when God says go, you say, uh, why? Or, 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 I need some more information. Or when God says don't go, then you say, well, I want to go. You, know, you can vacillate. But, uh, uh, and then there's just being impulsive and God having to corral you the whole time because you can't wait. Uh, watch this. Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 11 says this right here. Uh, 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 Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto, hear this, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. See patience, you know what? It has not only a benefit for us but the people that we're dealing with. Amen? Amen. It's not only a benefit for us in a sense of how we wait. The Bible talks about uh, uh, patience and hope and, and, and being joyful. But not only that, it's our patience with other people. And we learn how we learn that. You know how we learn that? Through the scriptures. And we see, how, you know what? Uh, look how much patience God had with us. Amen. After we are saved. Amen. Patience. Look at this. Go if you would to 1 Thessalonians. Chapter, chapter 1 and look at verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. It says this. First Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 says, uh, Remembering without ceasing, here it is, your work of faith and labor of love, and here it is, 
and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father. Patience of hope. Look at this. Go to James uh, chapter 1. James chapter 1 and look at verse 3 and 4. James chapter 1. Just those verses that are reminded because it is so prevalent in our lives, my brethren, that, uh, 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 and, and I think, you know, society, it, it, tries to, uh, it tries to scare people into jumping at, at every women woe that they say when God tries to cultivate this thing of patience in our life to just calm down and wait on the Lord. James chapter 1, uh, again, look at verse uh, 3. It says, uh, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire and wanting nothing. If, uh, uh, but let me tell you something. You can, you can see an individual that lacks patience. Have you ever seen, been around people that they lack patience? They can't wait on this. They can't wait on that. They can't wait on this. And they're constantly making mistakes in the seminary. You, why? Calm down and wait on the Lord. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse 6. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 6. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 6 it says and, uh, and to knowledge these are the things that add to your life. The virtue it says and to virtue knowledge verse 5 and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience Godly not, godliness and the godliness brotherly kindness and the brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you patience being one of them and abound that they make you I always like that they make you this is what makes you this is what helps they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ but look at verse 9 but he that lacketh these things is blind um, and cannot see afar off and have forgotten they was purged from his old sin. Amen. Patience is a great attribute. Uh, the Bible talks about you've heard of the patience of who? Job. Job. I want, don't you want to end up like Job at the end? Well, you got to have patience. Amen. You got to have patience. Uh, go, go if you will watch this. Go to uh, uh, Psalm 27 real quick. Psalm 27. See, the Psalm 27 or Psalm 37. Psalm 27. Psalm, Psalm 27. Look at this. Verse 13 says, I have fainted unless I believed uh, to see the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Courage, he shall strengthen thine what? Heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3 uh, says this. If you go quickly, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. A very familiar passage of scripture to anybody who's read their Bible, been around Bible uh, preaching because it's so appropriate. Proverbs uh, 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. There it is. That's the patience. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own what? Understanding. That's lacking patience. He says, uh, in all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall what? He can't direct your path, you know what, if you don't acknowledge him. Because you don't have patience. You're running before him. Amen? Constantly. And so, what the scriptures, you, watch this, they were given us so we can learn these lessons that we need to learn and so we can cultivate patience in our lives. Amen. We live in instant society, instant gratification. We move in more. Uh, I'm, they, I keep looking at these, uh, these new fango uh, things they, uh, to, for cooking. Uh, somebody said how we, we as a society, man, our patience is at an all time low. Uh, let me tell you something. We used to seem like no time at all cooking popcorn on the stove. Yeah, put, put, put it on the stove. Put popcorn. We put it in a little pan. Put a little oil in the bottom of it. Yes, and then faster, Jiffy Pop came. Right? It was already. Oh, we still. We still sat there and did this. Now we what? Microwave it. And microwaves, they come. We ain't got to even search. They got a popcorn. <laughs> they got. Are oh, you hit the button that says popcorn on it? Amen. Right? But somebody was talking about how we used to wait 
for cookies. We used to wait, you know, you mixed them up and all this kind of stuff. Now I bought some cookies. All you do is go there and you break them apart in the package. You put them in there and in 15, 20, 15 minutes they're done. And it just talks about, y'all remember when computers first came out and we would sit there and we would say, watch this, watch this, watch this. And we would see it buffering and our picture slowly came out. And we was all like, wow, wow, this technology. But let me tell you something. If I came over your house and you, <laughs> and something, I was like, what kind of garbage you got? <laughs> what kind of? And so now they got all these new uh, uh, cookers. These air, y'all hear about the air fryers and everything, you know, Instapots and all. What's, it's all about instantly giving and doing all. Let me tell you something. The Christian life is not that way. It's cultivated over a period of time. Amen. You learn patience. I think a lot of young people, because of their impatience in this life, that's why they get into financial straits so quick in their marriages. Because they believe they got to have it all. All They got to have the house. They got to have the car. They got to have the land. They got to have this. Uh, things that it took us lifetimes to acquire. And they got to all have it. Then all of a sudden, you know what? Now they're in debt and they're stressed out. And their marriage is... All this because of lack of patience. My brother, this, would have, it was, this is one of the key ingredients that the Bible, like no other book in our society today, is teaching us about patience. Amen? Now come back, if, if you will, to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. This is why it's so important, my brother. This is especially in the day and time which we live in, as we see all these things unfolding and and uh, 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 people taking matters in their own hands and and this, that, and the third. Uh, my brother, it's just for the Christian, you know what? It's a, a something that he needs to learn in his life that God's God's got. I don't care how bad it looks, God's still in control. Amen. Romans chapter fifteen. Look at this. Here's the last thing, Romans chapter 15. Four sort of things were written for, uh, written uh, a four time, were written for our learning. Have we learned our lesson? That we through patience, we cultivate in our life. Yeah. I mean, is it, it, it that, no, you're supposed to learn it as a Christian. This is, this is, a, again, it's a great blessing and benefit to you, and it will help you in the Christian service toward other people. This patience. Now watch this. He says, we through patience, here it is, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You know why this book was written? So we can have comfort of the scriptures. Amen and amen. You ain't getting comfort from the news media. Aaron, you. New strain of COVID. <laughs> Variant strain of COVID. Breaking this do -da -do -da -da, variant strain of COVID coming out. And people sitting there, oh, <laughs> double the mask. <laughs> I say these men out, these restaurants, and they got you in a bubble. They get people running around with these bold bubble things covering their whole life, their whole bodies and everything else and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, man, they're just scary. No, there's, you know, I'm just like, mm-mm-mm. You know what, let me, let me read my Bible. <laughs> let me read my Bible, Amen. Comfort, comfort, comfort. It was given us in... Let me tell you something. Why does it say that? Because the Lord knew in our lives and the way the world, the flesh and the devil operate, we would need something to offset that and it's called the Word of God to comfort us. Because we're not going to get it from anywhere else. Not this spiritual comfort you, 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 uh, you have in the scripture. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse 3. 1 Corinthians. How many, uh, uh, how many times have you, somebody, uh, uh, have you heard somebody say this verse? Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house uh, are, are, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told. I would have told you. I go to prayer, prayer, prayer. and it and it reminded you that this is not all there is to have. Amen and amen. Look at this, uh, verse First uh, uh, um, Corinthians fourteen and verse three. It says, uh, "But he that speaketh." Uh, he, but he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and what? Comfort. 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 That's something, you know what? Uh, I remember, there's this thing called Southern Comfort. 
But it, but it ain't but it ain't southern and it ain't comfort. Amen. No, yeah, temporary comfort. And you wake up in a mess. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter four. Look at this. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse eighteen. My brother, you know what people are lacking today in time which we live in? Good old comfort of the soul. I'm so glad I'm born again Christian. And I, who, none of us, let me tell you something, none of us at the close of uh, or midway or so whatever, 2019, none of us seen 2020 was going to be like this. Amen. Amen. None of us, no, none of us were seeing shutdowns and closings and, and none of us was seeing us wearing masks at the job and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? None of us seen none of this stuff. This stuff wasn't even on the radar. Amen. I'm so glad I had something to offset this and say, you know what, in the worst time and, and nobody's seen, you know, the economy. Every, I mean, everything was just roaring along and, you know, carefree and everything. And then, bam, all of a sudden, you, my wife reminded me, do you realize this right here? At the outset of this thing, they said it was going to be just two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks turned into nine months and counting. And but Mr. Biden said, uh, our darkest days are yet to come. Uh, give me a hundred, a hundred more days. I'm so glad, man, I can read my Bible and tell me about another place. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 4, look at this verse 18. But we'll come back before that. It says that, uh, uh, verse 13, first, uh, first Thessalonians 4, 13, but, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not, even as others have, which have what? No hope. No hope. That's where a lot of people say, why, why are people just, at, because they don't have any hope. Their hope was here. And that's it. And he says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by what? The word of the Lord. He says that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See, it was written for our comfort. So they're in the greatest mix of darkness. And notice how he talks about this event in somebody's life. This is when people die. Brother Baker said that, he said, I've been to many funerals, preached many funerals. He said, but the death of my mama, he said, it really has impacted my heart. Because it's mama. Amen. He said, I'm so glad I have this hope in Jesus Christ. My brethren, that's why people are in despair. They don't have no hope. That without you, you remember the Bible talks about us before our salvation. So without God, without without God, and without hope in this world, that's a bad place to be. Now watch this. Go to First Thessalonians chapter five. Look at this. Look at this. First Thessalonians chapter five. Verse, uh, verse 9, it says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, uh, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Look at verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. What's this? What's, what, 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 what is book written for? It's written for the darkest hours of our lives. We can find comfort through God's promises. If you haven't had darkest hours in your life, they may be approaching. It's not something you want to put on, but they may be approaching. And God is giving you this book. You know what? People are turning to alcohol, drugs, liquor, uh, 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 who knows? They just turn into everything and ex instead of turning to a place of real, lasting, and spiritual comfort with no side effects. No side effects. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at this. 
Verse 16, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, uh, which hath loved us and hath given us an everlasting consolation, here it is, and good hope through grace, here it is, verse 17, comfort your what? Heart. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every, every uh, good word and work. Amen? Brother, I'm, I'm into this, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm preaching the message is because, brethren, we're going to need the scriptures more. I really believe we're going to need the scriptures and the promises and the things that are being taught there more as the days grow darker. There's going to be a more reliance on the understanding that it gives and the knowledge it gives on how to uh, navigate. Let me tell you something. How to navigate the darkness because it surely is going to be darkness. Now, come back to our, our, our text. It says, last thing. Text. It says, uh, 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 Romans 15 and verse uh, 4. It says this. It says, um, Right, Romans 5, Romans 15. Here it is. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, there goes patience and comfort of the Scriptures, what does it give us? Hope. It's not a hopeless situation, my brother. Let me tell you something. It ain't a hopeless situation. Amen. It's not hopeless. I'll go to Titus uh, uh, chapter 3 before I let you go. Titus chapter 3. I said Titus chapter, Titus chapter 3. Oh, Titus chapter uh, 2. That's where it's at. Titus chapter 2. Here it is. Titus chapter 2. Verse 12. Uh, well, verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Here it is, verse 13. Looking for that what? Blessed hope. Amen and amen. My brother, let me tell you something. While everybody's going to be looking around, looking to politicians, you know I'm going to be looking? I'm going to be looking for the blessed hope that's found in Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a uh, 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 glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself of peculiar people zealous of good works he says of these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise you my brethren this book was given for us in a specific thing to, to, so we could learn some things about the worship of God, amen, about the warfare that we're in, amen, about uh, the spiritual battles we're in, about the, the things that we need that are, are, are central to our Christian life. We need to learn those things. We, uh, we learned that one of the greatest lessons in a Christian's life is this thing called patience. In order for God to work in our lives so that we can work in other people's lives and have that patience to wait on God. And then you know what? We can be comforted by the word of God and that will give us hope. Uh, uh, it's not good for a, a, a person to be without hope. They fall into despair. Amen. Yeah, they do. They fall into despair. They fall into despondency and all this other stuff. My brethren, the word of God was given to us to help us navigate the Christian life. Amen. And I think as the days grow darker, we're going to we're going to need it more. Amen. It, more than just this, this, this tattoo type Christianity, my brother. Let me tell you we're going to have to really, uh, like Colossians 1 says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Amen. Amen. A, a wealth uh, to, so it can be a blessing to you and to those around you. Amen. That's right. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed this evening. Why we have the scriptures. It's not here for us to correct it. Not for here for us to judge it. Amen. It's for our learning. And we through patience. Right. Uh, of the scripture. Uh, patience of the scriptures. Might have comfort and the hope thereby. Amen. Don't give up on your Bible my brethren. Fact check. Amen. Your fact checking book is your Bible. Amen.